Hi guys and welcome to Strength Universe. Today's video is a look at one of my favourite strongmen from the 1990s and possibly an uncrowned world's strongest man. Manfred Herbel was born on the 12th of May 1964 in Austria. He was 193 centimetres or 6 foot 4 inches tall and weighed around 135 kilograms. Manfred grew up in a suburb of the city of Kratz, which happened to be the same place as bodybuilding legend and seven times Mr. Olympia Arnold Schwarzenegger was born. Shortly after finishing his education in Austria, Manfred moved to South Africa and started training at his local gym at 18 years old. Initially, he had no aspirations of being a bodybuilder or strongman, but rather wanted to improve his fitness and social life by meeting like-minded people. However, within a few weeks he started to get caught up in the sport. He enjoyed lifting weights, training his body and seeing the physical improvements. In fact, his physique changed so rapidly that only a year into training, he entered his first bodybuilding competition. Manfred went on to compete at several bodybuilding shows over the years and was quite successful, but eventually decided that having judges' subjective opinion as to who had the best physique wasn't for him. Manfred wanted to compete in a sport where the results were objective, so he got involved in strongman through the owner of the gym he trained at, and from there started to compete in South Africa against world's strongest man competitors Gerhard Badenholst and Wayne Price. Manfred progressed very quickly in the sport, winning the 1989 and 1990 Austria's Strongest Man. From there he received an invite to compete his first international competition, the 1991 world's strongest man. Here Manfred's lack of experience at competing at such a high level showed in the very first event, the loading race, where his over exuberance caused him to gas out before he could complete the event, resulting in him finishing in last place. He had a slightly better performance in the barrel lift, in which he managed a 110kg barrel before failing at 120kg. Manfred had reasonable technique but lacked leg drive in the truck pull and finished the first day of competition in 6th place out of the 8 competitors. The 4th event was the 18 inch deadlift and was a lift that Manfred would struggle with throughout his career. He put in a better performance in the sack and barrow race but slipped back in the following two events and finished the competition in last place overall. Is there any other business you'd prefer to be in? Filmmaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Arnold, here we come boy. <laughs> This competition would also see Magnus for Magnussen win the first of his four World's Strongest Man titles. Manfred would only compete once in 1992 at the World Mighty Man competition, where he was up against many former and current World's Strongest Man competitors including Jamie Reeves, Gary Taylor, Magnus for Magnussen and John Paul Sigmundson. Herbal put in a very impressive performance, taking a runner-up position in a couple of events including the log press, where he achieved a weight of 170 kilograms, which at that time was close to the world record held by Jamie Reeves. Manfred went on to finish the competition in fifth place out of nine competitors. All of Manfred's hard work in 1992 really paid off in 1993, leading him to winning Austria's Strongest Man, Europe's Strongest Man, European Muscle Power Championships and the World Muscle Power Championships. He also took third place at the European Hercules and is reported to have finished in fourth place at the World Mighty Man competition. But having done some research, it appears that Manfred suffered from a viral infection after the first day of competition, resulting in a subpar performance on the second day and meant that he certainly finished outside the top six. Manfred would finish the year with a much improved performance at the World's Strongest Man, where he got off to the perfect start by winning the first event the juggernaut which required the athletes to pull a 7 ton truck down a 25 metre course. Manfred put in another excellent performance in the Leviathan lift that required the competitors to press a 110 kilogram or 242 pound log as many times as possible in 60 seconds and Manfred would go on to finish this event in joint second place along with Riku Giri. After winning the first event and taking runner-up spot in the second, Manfred had extended his lead at the top of the table to two and a half points. But all the energy he'd been exerting in these events was leading to extensive lactic acid build-up. Things unraveled for Manfred on the third event, Samson's Barrow, when after a good start he lost his footing. 
Even so, he managed a respectable fifth place finish, although he'd now slid down the standings to second place overall. The Clash of the Titans was the fourth event and was another one that Manfred looked to be doing very well in, making it through to the semi-final where he faced off against Rikukiri to whom he lost in a close sport match. Manfred finished the event in fourth place, and while he was still in second place overall, he was now four and a half points behind the leader Gary Taylor and only one point ahead of third placed Rikukiri. Throughout the competition, Manfred had been suffering from lactic acid build-up and now the doctors were showing some concern. Uh, yes, I think he suffers from his sheer size, an event where he's been working anaerobically for a long time that's without oxygen. Uh, his muscles produce a lot of lactic acid and his blood gets very acid. Manfred slipped down the leader ball considerably over the next couple of events after placing fifth in the car carry and seventh in the Hercules hold, the latter of which was primarily due to an injury that he suffered in Samson's Barrow. Manfred clawed back some points by winning the penultimate event, the Trojan's Wall, but it wasn't enough to make any meaningful difference to the overall standings after the damage caused by the results in the prior events. Have you had a good two days of competition? First two events was good and the last one was good too. <laughs> Despite a valiant effort in the Atlas Stones, Manfred wasn't able to improve his overall standing and finished the competition in fourth place. But in winning three out of the eight events while suffering from various issues, he showed the huge improvements he'd made over the past two years and the potential he possessed for the future. The improvements that Manfred had shown in 1993 continued in 1994, when he won Austria's Strongest Man, Europe's Strongest Man, European Muscle Power Championships, the World Muscle Power Championships and the Strongest Man on Earth. In achieving some of these results, Manfred competed against and beat the current World's Strongest Man, Gary Taylor, and the previous Strongest Man, Magnus for Magnussen. But how would he get on against them at that year's World's Strongest Man final? Manfred got his campaign off to a great start by winning the truck pull that required the athletes to pull two jeeps with a combined weight of six tons down the course. In winning the event he beat second place Magnus for Magnussen and third place Gerhard Bardenhorst. Big points in the first event, that's what you wanted. Yeah, it's certainly a cushion and it's a, it's a great start, I just love it. <laughs> the second event was a two ton Samson's Barrow where Manfred put in another great performance in an event that he otherwise would have won if not for a small stumble, which resulted in him taking second place just behind Riku Kiri and beating Magnus for Magnussen by the tiniest of margins to lead the competition by two points. Manfred, two events down and you're in the lead. You must be feeling quite good about it. Not good enough. I came only second in the second event. So my predictions were wrong. Despite stating in an interview how much he disliked the rock lift, Manfred still managed to hold his own and finish the event in joint fourth place, along with Scotland's Forbes Cowan. And in doing so, he just about managed to hold on to his first place position, but was now only half a point ahead of Magnus for Magnussen. The fourth event was a car walk and Manfred got off to an early lead before the inertia of the car got the better of him, which resulted in him having to place the car down before continuing again but even with this mishap he still managed to finish the event in the runner-up spot. The result meant that Manfred and Magnus for Magnussen swapped places at the top of the table, with Magnus now leading the competition by just half a point. <laughs> That's half a point between friends, you know. <laughs> the fourth event was a Hercules hold, and despite being famed with closing the captain of crush number three, it was an event that Manfred never did particularly well in, and indeed that would be the case this year as he finished the event in 5th place. And while he maintained his 2nd place overall, the gap to 1st place had extended to 2.5 points. The deadlift was always one of Manfred's weaker events, but at this year's competition he showed significant improvements to achieve a best lift of 390kg, and recalled a very respectable 4th place finish, which allowed him to hold on to 2nd place overall. The pole push was a seventh event and one that Manfred normally performed very well in, but at this year's competition the physicality of the event caused many injuries. After making it through to the final he made a tactical and perhaps incorrect decision to forfeit the match to Riku Kiri and settle for second place. 
This decision left Manfred and Magnus and Magnussen sharing first place at the top of the table, both with 42.5 points, going into the final event, the Glashenstones. The final event really was a case of winner takes it all, with both competitors neck and neck all the way through the first four stones, in what was probably the closest run final event of any world's strongest man in the history of the competition. In the end, Magnus for Magnussen edged out Manfred Herbel by a fraction of a second to claim his second of four world's strongest man titles, winning after eight events by only a single point. Although Manfred narrowly missed out on winning the world's strongest man title, 1994 was definitely going in the right direction. Not only in Strongman, but also in America, where doors were opening for Manfred to do TV work, movies and publishing. I doubled up when I went to America now. Um, people seeing me there, being there, it was a great success. From, first of all, I wrote a book, How to Get to Those Massive Arms. And um, we did it all within this year. I got a couple of offers going into movies or to start up moving, start up acting. And I got a couple of more things. And besides that, I did a lot of competitions throughout the year. I did The World's Strongest Man, which unfortunately Magnus beat me by something 0.25 seconds. Unfortunately, not long after this interview, Manfred was involved in a near fatal car accident. I actually don't know how the accident then happened. I just remember coming off the road and moving towards a big tree and that was the end of it. I crashed into that tree and they had to cut me out of the car and I really don't uh, remember exactly. It took such a long time. The accident happened in April and um, I spent 10 weeks in hospital. I spent 10 weeks in hospital now for the second operation. So time factor is the nerve wracking one. As you can see, I lost something like 90 pounds over those Six to eight months I've been around in hospital. So obviously I did not just lose on my legs and on my chest. I lost it on my arms too. But I can assure all my fans and friends I'll be back. Manfred spent months in hospital and had to undergo surgeries to repair his broken bones, including a hip that had been fractured in eight places. He was able to return to training in early 96 and would win Austria's strongest man for a seventh consecutive time. Manfred would return to international competition later the same year when he competed at the World Strongman Challenge that was held in Australia, eventually finishing the competition in third place behind runner-up Magnus for Magnussen and winner Nathan Jones. Manfred's first competition of 1997 was the World's Strongest Team. At this competition, Manfred had bulked up slightly to 140 kilograms and was competing with his compatriot Franz Ziller, who himself was competing at his first ever international competition. Well, 38.50, sorry, 38.34. Set then by you the Austrians. You have a really strong, positive attitude, and you really know how to take the audience. But it's just natural, you. Well, uh, a few things which has happened in my life. I was very successful, I was on the road to do more than just events. When I had my serious car accident, and if I wouldn't have done the sport, I wouldn't be on this earth anymore. And I think there's more to that to give back to the people, to get, just to get part of, of my life. And I go home happily when the people are happy, and it's not about money, it's not about anything else. It's just about happiness, and people go home after this event in the afternoon and say it was great. That pleases me too. <laughs> How did you get all that energy and all that power for yourself to get back to good shape? I think it's the mental attitude and the discipline you build up through the years of training. Nobody tells you what to do. If it doesn't come from your heart, you're not going to get there. The Austrian team finished the competition in a respectable sixth place. Manfred would go on to compete one final time in 1997 at the European Hercules competition. Well, it's different in that sense that it's the first appearance after my serious car accident I had two years ago. And um, But I always kind of enjoy coming back to Olo and um, I made the decision to make a comeback here in Olo. Don't you think that it is too hard to compete in three days before you compete uh, here in Olo only one day? This is part of our profession, taking risks. But it's I think it's calculated risks. So if nothing really unforeseen happens, normal injuries like playing soccer as well happen. I wouldn't over-exaggerate that. 
Little did Manfred know that the words he spoke in this interview would come back to haunt him in the very first event of the competition. Um, I just took one lock and my bicep tendon obviously came off there. Made that noise and um, when I look at it, as you can see here, this tendon attached here, snap, and now it's down here. So I have to go and see my surgeon on Tuesday and then I go back and then have it operated on. The European Hercules would become Manfred's final competition. With the bicep tear combined with other injuries and accidents he'd experienced over the past few years, making Manfred reassess his desire to compete. He would spend the next few years as a promoter of the sport until 2002, when Manfred was involved in another near-fatal car accident, when he was stopped at a junction on his motorbike waiting to turn left, when a car hit him at close to 80 miles an hour. Manfred was seriously injured in the crash and would spend the next few months in hospital undergoing surgeries and rehabilitation. He lost close to 100 pounds in body weight and his doctor advised that due to the injuries he would no longer be able to lift weights. Since that time Manfred has led a quiet life and stayed out of the spotlight. During the short period of time that Manfred Herbal competed at international competitions he gradually improved his placings going from dead last at the 1991 World's Strongest Man to narrowly missing out on the title in 1994. Along the way he won seven major international titles against some of the best strong men in the world and he also won Austria's Strongest Man a record seven times consecutively. Given the progression that Manfred showed throughout 93 and 94, I believe if it wasn't for his car accidents he would have had a very good chance of winning the World's Strongest Man title. As well as being a fantastic strongman, in my opinion, Manfred did a lot to increase the popularity of the sport, not only by having an awesome physique and the biggest arms in the world, but also through his charm and charisma that shone through in many of his interviews. But I'd like to know what you guys think, so please leave a comment below letting me know what you thought of Manfred Herbal and whether you believe he had the potential to win the world's strongest man. If you enjoyed this video, please help support my channel by clicking like, sharing the video and subscribing. Thank you.